Right, so uh, welcome to Jersey Jim Fish. I guess as you probably noticed when you clicked on this movie, I'm making red pepper wine today. But not these, these are for my dinner. The habaneros are for my dinner. Grilled peppers in the paper bag. Another minute. Why am I making red pepper wine? Because I never made red pepper wine before. And it's not that far out of the realm of stuff that I have done before. The principle behind uh, this wine and any vegetable wine are pretty much the same. Uh, this process can be repeated with, uh, you know, pretty much any any vegetable. And vegetable wine, I know it sounds strange. I, and I know my ear is on, you know, like on the grapes over here, but uh, this principle, you could do it a different way. You could do it a number of different ways. This is the way I use. It eliminates unnecessary chemicals uh, using heat to sanitize the product um, prior to fermentation to make the yeast happy. Seems to be, uh, it's a good solution to a problem of using unnecessary chemicals. I have uh, gone ahead and grilled a few of the red peppers. I think that'll add a depth of flavor. Uh, I have here, I think six pounds total of red peppers. I have um, two pounds of grapes. The grapes are gonna give it a vinous quality. And these are just like table grapes. Nothing special there. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and chop these up, skin these, chop them up and I'll show you the next step this is gonna be awesome stay tuned it's gonna be it's gonna be a great recipe I think we're gonna be making this again might add some black pepper to it you know if it was just me that was gonna be drinking it I'd probably add some some heat to it in the form of the habaneros but everybody's got to enjoy it so we're gonna go ahead and uh, leave it on the mild side Move the uh, the pith <coughs> and the label. Remove the label from the pepper and the pith. And I don't have a list, but I'm talking about this white stuff. So just around the stem like that. Follow the contour down there. If you get a rib that's in the center like that, cut on one side of it, and then just follow the contour again. All right, and throw it on your floor. You definitely want to do that. And again, there's some white in there. I don't think the seeds are going to matter. I, I mean, I'll remove as many as I can without belaboring this process any more than I already have. That's it. All the rest of them. That was an easy one there. I saved the squarest one to do that with, but I'll show you with this one. It's kind of a uh, odd shaped label. Alright, so around the stem end, follow the contour with the tip of the knife on either side. On one side of it, doesn't matter which side. Contour with the pith. Again, contour around the, uh, the stem end and on down. That's it. I rifled through these in like three or four minutes. Not too bad. We're going to give them a rough chop. I'll show you that uh, when I get to it. Alright, so we have a um, total of five pounds of red peppers, which uh, three pieces of which were... Now you don't have to, if you don't have a juicer, you can just add the grapes. Uh, to the boil, which we're going to be boiling this stuff in a, in a little bit, but you'd have to cut them in half, right? I mean, it's not really, you don't need me to show you how to cut them in half, but you'd have to open them up in some way, which I really don't feel like doing with two pounds of grapes. I have a juicer, so here we go. I have a gallon and a half of water here. Already up to a boil. 
and we're going to go ahead and add these vegetables, this, uh, this entire volume of raw. These aren't the uh, previously grilled red peppers. We'll go ahead and add them to the water. A few reasons why we're adding them to the boiling water. First and foremost, we're sanitizing them. That's the important part. We could do that with uh, sodium metabisulfate or, I'm sorry, sodium metabisulfate or potassium metabisulfate. But they have a really, really strong flavor and odor. And I can't imagine that given time they would ever be eliminated. They just have, if you put, they're also called Campton tablets. Put a Campton tablet in some water, dissolve it, and then inhale through your nose and try to hold your breath. It's pretty, pretty rancid. So <clears throat> I choose not to use them because this works absolutely beautifully. I also have, um, you know, obviously what we made earlier, the, uh, the grape juice extract and um, the grilled peppers. I got some dimonium phosphate, citric, tartaric, and malic acids. I have a sanitized um, filtration medium a strainer. You might call it a strainer. We're going to let these go for about 15 minutes, I think. About 15 minutes. We'll see. I'll let you know uh, if I had a clock in here. I'd look at the time, but don't have a clock in here. Meanwhile, uh, we're going to do the essential math. And the essential math is um, it's essential, which is why I'm going to take the time to do it. And I bought a dry erase board because I got tired of using my good art paper. So enjoy the math. And we'll get back to this in probably 10, 15 minutes. But for now, the math, I don't know. If you don't want to see the math, jump ahead, jump ahead to, uh, to this number, this, this time in the video. And you won't have to go through this. Might be kind of interesting, though. Because this and the grapes are going to add some alcohol to it. And I know how to calculate it. Uh, might not include it in the video. It might be kind of long winded and dry. I can't imagine me doing something dry and long winded with a monotone voice, but that might happen. So advance to that number. The reason we're uh, boiling the red peppers or any fruit you can do or fr vegetable rather you could do this with uh, carrots, parsnips like uh, in the carrot parsnip persimmon wine or I don't know beans you know like a I think a traditional wine used to be uh, green pea pods green pea pod wine that was a big one back in the day use whatever you have make alcohol you know whatever you can't eat make alcohol with it but at any rate um, so yeah, adding it to a boiling kettle will extract the sugar and then you'll have the, the vegetable to eat afterwards. I probably won't be eating four pounds of, of red peppers, but I know, they will be available. So we have this recipe, we're gonna do 1.5 gallons and we want the gravity of that to be 0 0.080. All right, so Anytime you're you're working with a hydrometer, it's going to have a one in front of it. So this would be 1.080. If you eliminate that one right off the bat, it makes this more logical in my mind. This is how I usually do it. This is how I always do it, actually. So a uh, gallon and a half at 0 0.080. If you multiply them out, you get a uh, 0.12. Okay. So 0.12, that's our, we need to get that gravity to make a 0 0.080 wine. 0 0.080 will give us an, uh, a wine at 11.2% alcohol. So I don't want it too hot. I don't want it too mild. So about 11.2% uh, you know, alcohol. All right, so this is our target. We gotta get to this with the sugar in the fruit, the red, bell pepper and the um, the grapes and whatever that doesn't make up we need to substitute that we need to give the yeast 
sugar to eat to make that alcohol content. That'll give it a, a good shelf life. And it'll make it wine, pretty much. The reason we're using the the, uh, the grapes as well is to give it a vinous quality. So if we take that point one two, which is what we need to get out of the sugar, and we divide that by a pound of sugar. Now, if you take a pound of sugar and you add it to a gallon of water, it will give you uh, 0.045. It, well, it'll give you 1.045, but it give, you get rid of that one, it makes everything easier, like I said. And everything will have a different number, like the 0.045. If you're doing uh, molasses, it'll give you a different number. If you're doing honey, honey gives you 0.032. If, you, if you're doing like dry malt extract, like beer, gonna be making beer tomorrow. Raspberry, raspberry corn beer, beer. It's gonna be, it's gonna be awesome. I can't wait to make that. Been wanting to make that for a really long time. So if you're using a dry malt extract, you get, you know, in a, in a gallon. If you take a pound of dry malt extract into a gallon of water, it gives you a specific gravity of 0.045, 0.047. It's basically the same as sugar. Um, liquid malt extract, 0.032. You know, there, there's tables for this online. You can find out exactly what's going on. But if we divide the 0.12, which is the necessary gravity points to give us the 11.2%, by the the yield, the potential alcohol yield of sugar, well, what do we get? We get 2.6. Two point six six, actually. So we'll we'll just call that two point six pounds of white sugar. So we're gonna have to add two point six pounds of sugar. Now I mentioned I might add the the math for the red pepper and for the for the um, the grapes, but not in this video. I'll do it in a future video. It's uh it's kind of involved. Ready to go. It's been. Oh, let's see. Alright, so this is this is ready to go. It's been uh, 43 minutes. And I'm working here with a uh, 9000 BTU burner. And these are going to be reused. Like, uh, they're going to be eaten after. So I don't want them too soggy. You could go ahead and, and freeze these any fruit or vegetable that you freeze it'll break the cell walls and make this extraction process a little bit better but you, you can see um, the liquids definitely infused with the flavor and some of the sugars which is why calculating the sugars is not always very very productive I mean we've got the sugar there but we're gonna go ahead and strain this I'll show you uh, show you how to do that effectively efficiently without burning my feet hopefully in a minute all right here we go so i have a uh, sanitized not that it really matters at this point but a sanitized strainer there a um, wine and, and beer making strainer oh, it doesn't see any you know fat i don't see anything right now either So you could, if you weren't going to use the peppers afterwards, oh, I got to get rid of these. Hang on a minute. If you weren't going to use these peppers afterwards, ah, oh, that yeah, floor's wet. It'll make, it's going to be mopping the floor tonight again. You can go ahead and add all these ingredients together, but I'm going to be reusing these peppers. I think uh, not me personally, but someone will eat them. I mean, I cooked them so that you know they're going to be good. So this right here is going to go back on the burner. It's go back on the burner. We'll get rid of that strainer and whatever liquid collects in here, we'll 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 re-add it to the pot. But right now, I'm 
and go ahead and carefully step around the puddle on the floor and hang on a minute let me bring you up to where I'm at just a second so we'll go ahead and add the uh, rest of the ingredients now well I mean the rest of the some of the rest of the ingredients this is the, uh, the charred pepper that we made that won't be reused that will be thrown in the garbage so I have a uh, a sanitized primary fermenter a plastic fermenter it's uh, sanitized and ready to go for this well that was hot Put that in go ahead and add the uh, grape juice in this will all get strained out that's the grape juice there this will all get strained out and discarded with the exception of the liquid the liquids what we're after the uh, the must the wine must ah oh, foot's wet damn it damn it Jim so this here I mean we have to invert the sugar and if you're not sure what that means uh, check out my movie uh, what is invert sugar how to invert sugar so I think we'll do that now as well because this is going to cook for about 15 minutes it doesn't need to cook for 15 minutes, but we're going to cook it 15 minutes. So here I have uh, the 2.6 pounds of sugar. Go ahead and add that in. And then in order to properly invert the sugar, we need to add some acid to it. So it's going to boil, not in a strong, strong way, just a, you know, kind of a mild boil medium boil go ahead and boil that for 15 minutes uh, but first we will add some citric acid and you could use a lemon for this and like i said check out my movie uh, how to invert sugar and you get a better idea why why i'm doing this that's uh that's about a teaspoon and a half and probably a little too much but it's not gonna matter we're gonna have to add some some acid to it after to make the yeast happy happy but that's it that's gonna go for uh, once it comes back to a boil it's gonna go for about uh, 10 15 minutes something like that we'll strain it out and we'll be good to go this smells great it smells really good you, you, I mean you won't know unless you try to make it but yeah, smells great. Hey, check this out. Check out what the postman brought me. Hang on a minute. Brought me some peanuts. And some some bubble wrap. Some people would be really, really entertained by the bubble wrap. All right, one more time. A nice knife in it. Got that for Christmas. This army knife. I lost mine. I flipped my kayak over. Lost my old Swiss army knife. So, still got me this for Christmas. Thanks, still. Not nearly enough packaging. I mean, it's not broken, so I guess that's good. Oh, yeah. Check it out. Got myself a Tri-Hone Stone. And uh, an Arkansas Stone. Hell, yeah. Oil Stone. All I have are Water Stones from when I was a cutter. I mean, they work well, but this time of year, they kind of suck when you have to go outside with waders on. You know, rain jacket. Yeah, it's just a... It's, so yeah, gonna have some sharp knives again. Hell yeah. So a couple things have to happen next. This has been boiling for about 10 minutes, well, simmering for about 10 minutes. Um, we have to add some, uh, some diammonium phosphate, which is a, a yeast nutrient. And this is, uh, I think, a half a teaspoon per gallon. 
if I'm not mistaken, that's a recommended dosage. Uh, one teaspoon per gallon. So I have a teaspoon here. I was going to go a little heavy on it. So we'll add a teaspoon and a half. That is actually the recommended dosage for wines. This not being a wine, it doesn't have everything the yeast need to, to be happy, happy. Nor does it have the acid. We'll add the acid after and the pectic enzyme after. Pectic enzyme is going to take the... Uh, I don't know if you ever made uh, like jelly and you boil you boil uh, fruit or in this case a vegetable and the fruit congeals right so whoop, I know. this is a an eighth of a teaspoon per gallon think now grape wines have the tannin in them so we're trying to almost emulate a grape wine uh, with the flavor of this so we're gonna add and I think that might be a little too much because we do have some grape in there not much but a little bit so that's probably an eighth half of a quarter that would be an eighth so we'll go ahead and add that in now it's important to add it to a separate vessel and stir it up so it's not all clumped together right this doesn't have to go in the boil we could we could keep this out for a little while um, but it can go in the boil it's not gonna hurt anything and then um, I guess I'll add the acid to it now when I got the camera on it's gonna boil for another five minutes. Acid's not gonna go anywhere. It's not gonna be neutralized or anything like that. So acid blend is usually what I use, which is 60% uh, citric, 20% tartaric, and 20% mal uh, malic. But I don't have acid blend. I have the individual ingredients. So. Actually, let me set up to do this, and I'll be right back. I want to I want to kind of measure them out a little bit, so I know what's going on. I know exactly how much I added. I don't want to I don't want to be guessing. And I think I added a teaspoon of citric acid already. So let me figure that out. I'll be right back. There's a uh, half a teaspoon of tartaric, half a teaspoon of malic, and a teaspoon and a half, roughly, of uh, citric which will give us a little better than a tablespoon maybe a tablespoon and a half of acid we can adjust that later we can make some fall out with calcium chloride if we need to i mean if we really want to do the math i don't want to do the math i'd rather just add a little less than i need from experience and uh, be done with it can always add more that's my point so we're gonna let this come up to a rapid boil for two minutes and then we'll strain it I'll show you that in a minute all right moving up to a boil for uh, the last five minutes I added uh, some Y yeast yeast nutrients and a little bit of um, uh, what do you call it Irish moss which is a beer brewing ingredient. The Irish moss actually worked worked pretty well. Uh, most of the stuff that was floating around in there is all caught up on top. So yeah, that worked out pretty well. Glad I had that ingredient. I got a gallon of water. Oh yeah, right here. So we're gonna go ahead and rinse the sugars out of that, and then we're gonna strain it out. I'm not streaming. We're gonna cool it off. That's what I meant to say. We're gonna cool it off very, very quickly, as quickly as we can without a freezer or or a refrigerator big enough for it. So sink of cold water. That's what I got. That's what I got going on. But yeah, that worked out pretty well. This is this is all congealed from the Irish moss. This stuff here. That's awesome. That's a fining agent. Check out uh, my movie. I don't even know what I called it. Check out one of my movies. 
think that's my point. How was that? Oh. All right. So yeah, into the sink, cold water with that. We're gonna put a lid on it and keep it nice and nice and um, sanitized. And like I said, I got a sanitized bucket over there, all ready to go. So once this chills out, uh, I have selected a yeast. Uh, and I'll talk to you about that in a minute. I'll show you the sink setup. It's not that extremely difficult, but I'll show it to you anyway. We've been in the sink for about uh, probably 40 minutes. Uh, three changes of water. And we are down at uh, 64. Which is a little low. But um, we got, we're going to have to add some water to it. So over here, over there, over there I got a sanitized primary fermenter. We're going to add this to it. We'll probably add a little bit of, of water to it to uh, thin it out. The whole process up to this point has been to sanitize what's in here, the contents of this pot. So I've been very careful to use a sanitized uh, stirrer, or thermometer rather, and haven't gotten any sink water into it. Been very, very careful. So into the sanitized bucket. We don't need to strain it this time. So I'll show you that in a second. All right, so I've taken the time to uh, completely dry off. Right there, I've taken the time to completely dry off the uh, the cooking vessel, uh, bottom, top, everything. We don't want to add any uh, don't want to add any bacteria at this point. That was the whole reason of doing all this. So in it goes. It's probably a gallon and a quarter. I want to make a gallon and a half. Uh, right now I want to also add the pectic enzyme. Pectic enzyme will keep it from getting a chill haze. And it's okay to just add that right to it. Granted you have a sanitized spoon. And we'll add about a teaspoon of that. Half a teaspoon per gallon is what they call for. Hold on a minute. Be right back. This is a uh, oxygen stone. You could go ahead and just pour it from bucket to bucket. That would do about the same thing or slosh it around, stir it a whole bunch. But the oxygen stone does it real quick, real simple. I'll go ahead and clean that and sanitize it again. Ready for the for the beer tomorrow. Gonna be making a beer tomorrow, hopefully. <clears throat> so here I have the yeast I selected was a Lavlin ICV D7 or D47, which is a good yeast for a low nutrient must. It's a very good yeast for uh, for like meads. Meads don't have a whole lot of stuff in them that the yeast need to eat. Even though we have all that, that's a good white wine yeast all around. And like I said, we're going to add some water to it. We're going to take a hydrometer reading. So Alright, so we're going to take the gravity here. Our target gravity was 0 0.080. Got them off the floor anyway. Sanitized uh, hydrometer sanitized testing tube and a sanitized wine thief. And we don't want to aerate this at all. We want to kind of get it in real easy and deliberate like. And when, I mean, if you have a hydrometer, it helps. You can do it with the math. You'd have to measure out amount of liquid that you have. Uh, in my case, I don't have a measurement of this vessel because I have so many different size brewing vessels. So I measured the, uh, I marked the hydrometer and dropped that in. Now you don't need to add, okay, let's see here. You don't need to add this must back to the 
uh, to the liquid. But being as so I'm working with such a little small amount. Alright, so we're at 0 0.090. That was predictable because it boiled for some time, reduced the amount of liquid. Uh, like I said, I wanted to start with a gallon and a half. So we're going to have to add um, probably a quarter gallon to it to get it up to get it down to the gravity that we want. I don't want it to be well, I don't know, whatever that is. It'd probably be like 14% alcohol at 0 0.092, 0 0.094. I don't know if you can see this, but there is a a meniscus. Let's see, I'll turn the light around here. A meniscus that forms around the hydrometer and around the tube. So you got to kind of take the difference of the. Uh, there's a level on this side that goes up like that, and there's a level on that side that goes up like that. But another thing that helps if it's a if it's a fermenting beverage is spinning it around because the bubbles will hit the you know they'll attach to the to the glass and cause it to rise a bit but uh, we're gonna go ahead and add like a quarter gallon of cold water to this another thing I wanted to mention was the um, the temperature that the hydrometer is calibrated to 64 62 degrees I'm not sure which uh, if it's much above that like when I make beer in the summertime the beer usually cools down to uh, I don't know like 74 76 78 sometimes and you have to add some gravity points to that to account for the difference in the gravity but anyway we're gonna go ahead and add some water to this quarter gallon get it to the 0.080 that we originally anticipated and then leave it sit and I'm gonna crash hard tonight because holy is this beer strong this is my the bottom of my second glass of this and I'm going to sleep well tonight. So we'll see this uh, tomorrow the next day. I don't know. Alright, so I added, uh, like I said, about, oops, about a quarter gallon of, of water to the primary fermenter. I will go ahead and pop that lid down and add. You could add uh, sanitized water to this. I'm pretty sure this water here is bottled water. Oh, and I used um, primarily distilled water for this recipe. So I can always add what I need to make it do what I need it to do. Taste like I want it to taste afterwards. But if you start with something that has too much calcium, too much salt, you're kind of screwed. So airlock uh, a bung you get the, the bung holio there. can you even see it get the bung there and uh, that's it now I'm gonna crash out what time did I start I started about one o'clock it is eight it's eight to eight it's eight o'clock oh my lord for a gallon and a half of wine wow quite an effort but I'm sure it's going to be awesome. I wouldn't have wasted time doing it if it wasn't going to be awesome. And wow, is this beer strong. This is the old ale. Second glass. Holy. Anyway, uh, maybe tomorrow, maybe the day after, I'll show you what's going on with it. It will be fermenting in a day or two. I'll show you. Next. In a second for you, in a couple of days for me. All right, so it's been uh, 48 hours, and it's fermenting nicely. That's amazing. It smells. It smells like fruit. It smells like. It smells like. Uh, I don't. Know, I can't place it. Like. I don't know. I'm gonna. I'm gonna think about that. Whoa! Hello. So this never ceases to amaze me. I mean, that is an active fermentation. There, check that out. Got that foam up there. We gotta aerate this a little bit. So 48 hours. It looks like the uh, the hydrometer is about 0 0.065, 0 0.068. All right. So the uh, the red pepper. 
uh, red pepper wine must is ready to rack into a secondary fermentation vessel into the anaerobic stage of the fermentation. I've already dumped a one gallon into one gallon jug. I, I don't have quite a gallon and a half here. So I'm going to break it up a bit. I don't want to get a whole lot of the, the lees. The sediment in the bottom of this container into the fermenter. And you can see that, that kind of swirling gook that's at the bottom. And I think I might have measured it pretty well. I can't figure out for the life of me what this stuff smells like. It smells... It doesn't smell like red pepper. It smells like some kind of fruit. I can't... I can't place it. Really, I can't. It, it is unique. It is a very unique odor. I'm sure it's going to be a really, really good wine. I, I hope it's going to be a good wine. I'll make it a good wine. Rest assured. So, these are going to... Uh, actually, first I'm going to write what's on them. And then they're going to get an airlock. Alright, that one gets the little airlock. And then, ah, I don't have any... I don't have any number six and a half stoppers. Or do I? Right, well, this one's going to get a stopper and a different airlock. And we'll go ahead and write the information on these. And leave them go. And they're going to fall out pretty quick, I think. Not much stuff in them, besides the yeast. Managed to get most of the fruit out. But anyway, that's going to be that for for a minute anyway. It's going to take a couple weeks for it to fall out. Probably a week. A week and a half. A week and a half. And maybe two weeks. But anyway, that's the next step. And then the next step after that, after this. So you know the most important thing for uh, for what not starting the bacterial contamination is not suckling on the end of the racking cane to start a vacuum to start the siphon. You do that, just give up. And speaking of suckling, check this.